ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಷನರ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲ್ to uh, be one with that uninterpreted law of awareness so that is trishu chatartham tailava dasit so this is possible uh, only when the consciousness is clearly understood so the conscious mind and subconscious mind should identify or experience what is consciousness then only this all process is possible therefore uh, the meditation should be on the functions of mind and from where how the mind is function so this way the yogi can turn back and understand the existence of the experience of consciousness so now uh, this process is very subtle and in, in a very deep uh, the level of understanding therefore the sadhaka should gradually develop himself into this stage for that now how can this be developed in a gradual form so this is uh, discussed in the next sutras So, twenty-first sutra, magnaha svachitte na pravishet, magnaha svachitte na pravishet, so yesterday I just mentioned the, this point of practice. a very simple thought should be identified which uh, with the uh, objective part and subjective part so first uh, when we identify a thought in that the object will be uh, the first thing we know we catch so after identifying the object the process can be continued to identify how the how this consciousness is reacting on that object so for example if we have a thought of an object which we love so the object is seen in the form there is there would be a name and form and then uh, when the object is uh, with name and form we can think how this name and form is known to me so this is the awareness there so we are uh, uh, stopping uh, in that process of 
identified. So this is happening every moment with every thought in the mind. But uh, by lack of practice, we are unable to separate it and identify it. So this is what is uh, said here in this sutra. Magnaha Svachitena Pravishet So by one's own mind Svachitena or we can say with an awareness of I consciousness so that we call as subjective identification So there is object, objective identification as well as subjective identification uh, normally the thought is identified with object, therefore the thought becomes objective identification because uh, the, uh, the object is important in that thought. Here we have to reverse the process. In practice we should identify the eye consciousness in each thought. That is Swachitta. When we say chitta, chitta is with consciousness, reflected consciousness, or active consciousness, with an awareness of inner eye consciousness. One should magnaha pravishet, one should enter into the mind. Magnaha. The completely one with the that consciousness of the, uh, the identification there what we feel as uh, I so magna the completely merged into that so magna swachitena pravishe so now uh, when we th- uh, uh, talk about uh, this thought identification this is the only means we have to, we have uh, as a means to enter into consciousness. Because without this, we cannot, uh, we have no other uh, uh, entrance or way to identify what is consciousness is. So therefore, uh, this uh, magnaha, magnaha means merged into that. So, fully one with the thought there and in the uh, in that thought the I consciousness is identified. This is all mental process. So, it means uh, this is not possible without thought. That is what we feel because without thought this meditation is not possible. But uh, the thing here it is, even though thought is there, but the meditator won't see the thought, he will only see the I consciousness. So this is the difference. When we concentrate on the subject, the object becomes secondary and object may disappear. There is no objective uh, thought. So the this identification becomes subjective. So this is the uh, uh, no, the practice of identifying consciousness which we call as Sakshi Prakriya uh, which is uh, the, the, who am I called Sakshi Prakriya. This is the Svachitta here. The thought uh, we have to say the I uh, thought without a thought process or thought without an object. Thought with only having the I consciousness, the I-ness. And this all process happens without uh, an effort. Here the effort means applying it another thought for identifying the first thought. It's all complicated. Like if we want to know the first thought 
we should make a second thought for that. This is one thought is knowing another thought. But here it should be uh, spontaneous or automatically happen. If something happens spontaneously, it means you are uh, you have given the auto suggestion. The auto suggestion is a another uh, uh, aspect of this practice. So, like before uh, going to sleep, what we do? We think about sleep, and we say to ourselves, "I am going to sleep." Now, if a thought is there, even about the sleep, sleep won't come, or any kind of thought related to any object, the sleep won't happen. Now, if that is the case, what happens there is we give a thought, as we we can call it as auto suggestion of sleep. Then this auto suggestion works. The body and mind is tuned for sleep. Same way, this process happens. So we are uh, when we sit for meditation. Before meditation, we give the suggestion as I am going to meditate, and I will be concentrating on I, Iness, or the subjective part of thought process. So this uh, constantly when we give this suggestion for some time or very seriously because uh, the auto suggestion should be serious. No, uh, it should be very intensive. Then it works correctly. If it is diluted with other options then it don't work. So no, when we uh, the the time of sleep, we may think about some other activities or seeing some uh, no uh, some objects and reading some books or some other thing is connected to that. Then the auto suggestion doesn't work. Therefore, this thought uh, before giving the meditation and uh, our no, meditative thought, we should be very uh definite or determined to practice that meditation so this uh, making this uh, thought or auto suggestion we need to study just like this we should know how we are going to meditate the all process is given to mind suggested to mind and mind programs those uh, suggestions then the meditation starts this is the secret of uh, ease meditation, easily meditating, or a continuous uh, longer time of meditation. So we should prepare before meditation. The mind should be purified and uh, suggested and uh, you know, uh, prepared for the meditation. So this way it happens. So magnaha swachitena pravishya. Therefore, normally we keep a, a particular time fixed for meditation. The reason is, in that time, before that time, mind would be ready for that because of the regularity or regular practice. Therefore, fixed time is important for any sadhana, not only meditation, even for japa, puja, or uh, practice of pranayama, any, any sadhana, the fixed time is important. Uh, now you know how it works, because the fixed time is working as an auto-suggestion. It is already programmed into that time. Yeah, it works. It is not. It is not working. It will work. Whenever uh, we get time, we can do and work. But uh, for the continuity and uh, no stability, making like we said the 
impression, stronger impression in the mind, we should fix the time and the practice. Because the time fixing will give this auto suggestion a, in, in, in its own, uh, no, what you say, the, the process. So it will uh, bring that into mind and then you are ready for that. Uh, similar things happen in our uh, daily practice like the food. The food we have at a regular time before uh, uh, consuming it, uh, no, the body will be ready for digestion. So this, uh, this happens there. Therefore, uh, this time fixing is an uh, important part of this type of uh, practice. <coughs> so now, uh, in support of this practice, uh, some pranayama or some prana practice is again mentioned here. Prana samachare samadarshanam So, now in this uh, while we practice meditation, mind goes out. So, this is a regular problem all the practitioners face. If we sit for meditation, sometimes mind is quiet and concentrated and just it goes out. Then, what we can do for that as a remedy for that? is prana samachare samadarshanam. So, we can resume the process by slowly spreading out the prana or just concentrating on the prana immediately. So, whenever mind goes out, we just concentrate, bring back the mind through our prana. <coughs> So this is called prana samachara. Usual uh, course of uh, breathing is resumed. So now when we were meditating, we first we took the uh, technique, or any of technique, pranayama or any other technique. But sometimes we got, uh, we got the meditation, that we were in that meditation, concentration. And now uh, again mind is going out. So you came to know that mind is going out. The mind is thinking about some other object or uh, no, some, uh, some other uh, things what is happening in the mind. So when you just get the awareness immediately, again we can concentrate on prana, the breathing and then the meditation is resumed. So like the prana samjare, samadarshanam. So, samadarshanam is slowly spreading out the prana with the awareness of uh, the universe, the consciousness. Now, prana what we normally uh, understand is the breathing what is happening in us. But this breathing is only, a, only an activity of prana. Say, say just a, uh, a part of prana. But uh, really the prana is everywhere. The prana is outside with the air and everywhere in all beings the prana is there. So when we take prana as the means of sadhana, first we start with the breathing techniques, then with that, slowly spread out the prana. It means the prana inside we feel is not only inside but also outside. So, thinking that this prana is one with the air outside and that air is uh, going inside, so we can think about that relation. And when we uh, do this, the pranayama, the the breathing should be very slow, so slowly uh, taking it and uh, then uh, like uh, slow and steady 
we call it sukshma pranayama uh, making it very slow and lengthened uh, is more lengthened when we take slow uh, then it become uh, very you uh, know it is lengthened automatically it is lengthened so uh, long breath of inhaling and exhaling with a very slow intake so you like we want take we can just uh, immediately take uh, something you uh, know like uh, no, more uh, amount of air inside and if we slowly we take we can take less amount of breath so that is what he says usually uh, we do uh, the the regular regular intake of air is again regulated by samadarshanam so samadarshanam the samadarshanam can be uh, translated as a prana is everywhere uh, contemplating on that prana which is everywhere and connecting with the uh, the same awareness now uh, we have one other uh, support of prana with the consciousness so the first sutra said about only about the thought process the subjective parts of thought process and this sutra is uh, helpful for that because sometimes if we are unable to catch hold of that subjective part then we uh, we are we can think about this so prana samachare samadarshanam so samachara means uh, looking uh, on prana or uh, uh, like uh, spreading the prana this is all called samachara the regular breathing of the prana breathing uh, the span the time of the prana that is prana samachare samadarshanam this is the technique normally uh, used in all our uh, spiritual practices uh, even in uh, karma we have this karma kanda we have this uh, pranayama and uh, meditation of uh, of course meditation we have the this pranayama and yoga practice we have this pranayama so this pranayama is very helpful for uh, the beginners to start with the meditation so prana samachare samadarshana madhye avara prasavah so the sutra says while practicing this in between uh, intervening stages the other objects will come they will appear in between so we should not be very much worried about what is appearing there so madhye uh, madhye in, in, in between in the uh, in the middle of that practice avara prasavah avara means unnecessary thoughts unnecessary object inferior objects uh, so they will come in between so sometimes when we meditate suddenly some object some strong thought will appear in between so we are disturbed that and some then slowly may go away if we have uh, any kind of strong emotions uh, this will uh, happen uh, occasionally is not occasionally it will happen regularly if we have the sp- uh, strong uh, emotion of anything so that emotion will bring this objects so when we sit for meditation otherwise Uh, it is okay otherwise there is no uh, disturbance we are normally uh, doing everything but especially when we sit for meditation our strong emotions will bring unnecessary thoughts so this is uh, intervening uh, the meditation with these thoughts so that is called madhye avara prasava avara means uh, these thoughts are uh, this uh, objects which are coming there is not uh, helpful for the meditation therefore it is called inferior 
prasavahamin generation appearing so it it would happen now uh, what we can do what is the remedy for that the same thing the prana can be resumed again we can think about pranayama or we we are practice uh, practicing japa uh, that we will discuss about japa in the sutra that is from the sutra will come about japa so if you are practicing japa that japa can be resumed or uh, any ob- uh, objective concentration like tratakam if you are keeping a tratakam practice so that can be resumed or if it is not all this is possible just stop the meditation and do something else that is the last remedy why if the the thought which came is strong is not leaving you and the uh, meditation cannot be practiced then better you don't sit there and meditate the time like just stop the meditation and do for another work by otherwise the whatever energy we is gained the brain gained by meditation will lo- uh, will lose this uh, the new thought which came it will uh, take all the energy of the good energy so therefore if any disturbance in the mind better don't meditate in that time in that particular time uh, to uh, people uh do not understand this uh, point uh, people think that if the mind is disturbed if we meditate we will get uh, no some relaxation and all this is not the case is when mind is really re- disturbed with any any kind of uh, thoughts emotional or any kind better don't do any such practices in that time because if you do practice or try to concentrate that particular thought will be stronger in your mind and the uh, uh, what you say the impression of that thought will go to subconscious mind therefore if somebody is mentally disturbed uh, for uh, uh, mental uh, if they have some mental disease or mentally disturbed they should not do any kind of meditations so they can practice like uh, pranayama uh, no sorry sorry pranayama is this kind of pranayama which is connected to physical activities like uh, with some exercise and like that walking and all those so they should uh, bring the mind uh, or connect the mind more with the physical activities they uh, should not uh, concentrate similarly pranayama also when body has some uh, problem body is disturbed mind is disturbed uh regularly pranayama is not uh, good so if you practice pranayama also the same thing happens because the disturbed mind will get more energy so the disturbance will be more or it will be deepened if you do pranayama in that time so uh, this is all uh, you know in regular practice we should be aware about all these things but uh, when we see uh, if we, we are regularly practicing all this your mind won't be disturbed in such a way that you should stop the practice but if sometimes it happens we should avoid that time because the practice itself will protect the mind and body for the practice because you will you will not fall ill and the mind will be ready for uh, the time of practice and all this will normally happen that is what our experience says but uh, if sometimes is not uh, in a good mood for the practice so we don't uh, practice that like you no know, like a, like the same thing the sleep is disturbed why if you have a uh, problem with the mental mind or body anything like that the same thing is with the meditation also therefore uh, first we it should be uh, you know purifying our mind the mind mind should be purified and the uh, and body and the uh, mind should be relaxed then we practice the pranayama and uh, through that the meditation 
Now, the Nasi Sutra also says the same. When the stage is lost, now you have practiced meditation for some time and uh, some good experience, uh, some experience of bliss or you know, relaxation or inner experience or uh, like uh, you know, feeling of consciousness everywhere, such a uh, inner experience. If uh, that experience is coming and going, this means uh, it is uh, rotating or fluctuating, then what we can do? So that is what it is said here. It means, uh, like uh, what I said now, the first uh, thought and the second thought and third thought, if we take three thoughts, in between the second thought is not uh, uh, really supporting the meditation. So, like uh, we are interested to meditate, the first thought says you meditate, the meditation is good. And when we sit for meditation, you will think about uh, something uh, uh, you know, more uh, important than meditation. So, the second thought will come. And then again, you will bring the thought that no, I, now I should meditate. So this, if we uh, take these uh, three thoughts and make a graph of the, the three thoughts. So now, where the, the second thought is entering, or the uh, second thought entering and giving uh, uh, more strength, or uh, getting more strength, strengthened, then, uh, uh, obviously, your meditation will be disturbed because this second thought is getting uh, more energy from the practice. So, in that case, uh, math, uh, now the sutra says, Matra Swapartyaya Sandhane Nashtasya Punaruthanam. Ashtasya Punaruthanam. So we started to concentrate on subject as the consciousness. Now that consciousness or subjective meditation is not there. It is lost. You, you, you took some object, some important matter and now you are thinking about that. The meditation is lost. So that is called Matra Swapratya Sandhane. So Matra here it means, Matra normally means measure, measurement. Matra, we know that. So here the Matra means objects. Because objects are limiting the thought. It means object, uh, objects are identified with the thought. The delimiting factors of thought is object. Therefore, object is called matra. In Sanskrit it says, miyate iti matra. So if you want to know what is your thought, take the object in the thought. That is the, that is the only way we can do it. How we know what thought we have. And only say, I am thinking about this. So I am thinking about this particular object. It means you are uh, identifying the thought with that object. So therefore, the object is called matra. So, matra sopratya sandhane. The object are, now objects are uh, limited. Okay? Limited objects. The so limited means all the objects are limited. The, uh, limited objects. Now, these limited objects can, cannot uh, take the consciousness as whole. The limited object will only reflect or the reflection of consciousness in that form. It cannot take the subjective consciousness. The limited object will always take the objective form of that, the reflection of that. It means you will only see 
the object there, not the consciousness. Therefore, I uh, mentioned this as a objective meditation. So now we are seeing only object, not the subject. So we are trying to meditate on subject, the uh, consciousness, the, the all-pervading consciousness, or the limitless consciousness, or united consciousness, the consciousness in its full form. In that case, svapratyaya sandhane nashtasya punaruthanam. So, the lost fourth stage is uh, brought back. The fourth stage is pure consciousness. So, that is brought back by this uh, no, objective meditation. So, now the subjective meditation and objective meditation Oh, subjective meditation is the final one, but through objective meditation you enter into subjective meditation. The so subject is not known by the reflection of the object. Kumatra Sopratya Sandhane. It's like uh, just now we uh, uh, took that example, the first thought, second thought and third thought. In between the second thought is disturbing thought. Now what we, we can do is, we take the first thought and if the second thought comes, so we can think about the subjective part of that second thought. And now, like there is something important, something should be done very importantly that we are thinking about that. We just think why, you know, who is going to do that? If I am going to do that, I am the doer. So this this way you bring back the uh, thought into object. Now importance is given to the activity there. But who is doing the activity? So just put this uh, thought there. If without me this activity uh, will happen, or without me something is possible, not. So therefore, just uh, uh, think and uh, about uh, our own self and bring it back. Like you just when you sit for meditation, uh, no, for a, a, a normal uh, example, we can say if you are sitting for meditation, you you think, oh, okay, I will uh, drink a tea. Now uh, you remember the tea. So now you will uh, th- think about the tea and how we uh, we will uh, we should prepare. No, I should uh, prepare the tea. And all those we will think. Okay. So there, now the T is important. As, like, you know, if you took the uh, position there. There we can put, simply we can think that this T is important because I am going to drink it. So the, the I am going to drink it, so it is important. Not the T is important, but I am going to drink it. I am going to make it. So, therefore, myself is important there, not the tea. So, this way, this way that you can shift from the object to the subject. Who wants to drink the tea? So, you will immediately you will get yourself there, uh, placed. Now, in the, in the place of tea, you are placed. So, you, you, you can think about like that. So, this is a very normal thing that we can do it, but uh, when we uh, meditate on this level, uh, deeper level, the all-pervading consciousness should be remembered in this place. So, first the object, then the I-consciousness, I-consciousness means me, my, and all this is connected to I-consciousness, which we call as respect. A reflective consciousness or active consciousness or whatever. From that or through that we enter to formless consciousness. The all-pervading, universal, united consciousness. So that is the main uh, way of doing this. This is the path how we can resume the meditation path. The Nashtasya Gunaruthana. Therefore, all kinds of meditation, again I am uh, saying that, whatever meditation you do, we start with object only. 
So the starting point is object. Without object is not possible. So take the object and then uh, go to the subjective level of uh, uh, meditation. And then if you are a good practitioner, after a long practice, uh, practice you can easily enter to subjective meditation. You can just think about yourself and be with yourself. So, now continuing this practice for a longer time. Now his meditation is completely established. He is an established meditator. So you can meditate whenever you want. So in that level, the consciousness is identified with Shiva, the all-pervading pure entity, all-pervading uh, uh, principle of Shiva, the absolute, pure, perfect, blissful state. So that is experienced. Shiva Tulyo Jayate So, with an unshakable practice, fully established practice, this yogi becomes like Shiva. Shiva Tulyaha Jayate. So, now what is this uh, state of Shiva? The word meaning of Shiva is completely pure, blissful. So you will get uh, full enjoyment, the complete enjoyment, that's called Shiva, absolutely free, per perfectly or uh, uh, perfectly uh, pure, there is no impurity. The impurities are uh, like the functions of consciousness. Uh, those are all disturbing factors, uh, like the thought process, even the thought process and meditate, if, if I remember that I am meditating, this is a, itself is, a, is an impediment there. So therefore, uh, this unshakable practice means it's completely there with that. Uh, is, we, we already with the uh, Shiva, the oneness with Shiva. Shiva Tinyo Jayate. Sharira Vrittir Vratam It says Sharira Vrittir Vratam If this practitioner is completely one with Shiva and he is not remembering the body and other activities, how can he maintain the body? So how this mode? Bodies uh, maintain. So then it says, Sharira Vrittihi Pratam. Sutra says, the Praradha of the Sharira, the Karma of the Sharira, the maintenance of body is done by its own Vritti. Vritti we say life. Life is also Vritti. Uh, like job and other things we do for our life is also called vritti and his thought process is also called vritti. But uh, here is life say, uh, sustaining karma is called vritti. Sharira vritti means uh, how the body is maintained. The body is maintained by the previous karmas which are giving the effect of that it is called fruitifying karma, prarabdha karma. So the prarabdha karma will uh, serve that purpose. So sharira vrittir vratam. So vratam means observance, any kind of holy practice. So now this yogi will be uh, giving the body to his own karma and thinking that this is my observance, this is my practice. Now I won't do any special uh, 
service to the body and body will be maintained by its own karma. So some uh, complete uh, surrender to the prarabdha karma. So that, that become a bratham for him. Accepting that or uh, observing only that uh, practice. So he is not doing any special thing for that. So by the karma, uh, the everything will be there. The food and accommodation, whatever we need to need for our uh, body, physical maintenance, it will all come to him, and he will be uh, living with the, uh, this practice. So because this practice, we don't say the practice will bring all this, but the karma will bring. And the practice will be continued. <coughs> so, in all our Vedanta and other philosophies, we have a concept of this uh, prarabdha karma. So we have three kinds of karma. Out of that, prarabdha karma is important because prarabdha karma is uh, making this body. The manifestation of body is from prarabdha karma, maintenance of the body, birth of the body, death of the body, everything is <coughs> in prarabdha karma. So the whatever we enjoy in this body is also by prarabdha karma. The suffering is also from prarabdha karma. Therefore, nothing to worry. If the karma is there, the karma will bring all those and connect with that. That is the belief, that is the theory of karma. Therefore, uh, the practitioner, the sadhaka, will give up the body to prarabdha and he will be free. Whatever happens is so. If something comes, he accepts. If something is not coming, he will not go and stay. So this is the attitude. It has become a pradham for him. Pradham means holy practice or observance. So he, he accepts it and he be with that. <coughs> now, uh, here it says, in this stage, whatever he recites becomes Jabba for him. Uh, whenever he likes to meditate, the meditation automatically will happen. And the mantras will be automatically recited. So that is what it says, the next sutra says. Katha Japaha Ha. It is interesting that uh, Katha, it means conversation. Or whatever he talk, uh, talk about, uh, murmur or whatever, this Japa. Katha, any kind of verbal communication. Called katha. So the katha becomes japa for him. Japa. Uh, japa, we know mantra japa and other kinds of japas. They have three kinds of japas. Audible japa, which is called vaikari. Audible japa, we recite the mantras loudly. It's audible to others. And the second one is called Upamsu Japa. The Upamsu Japa, the mantra is not audible to others. Only the practitioner will listen to that. Murmuring, that murmuring kind of lips movements will be there, but the sound won't be produced. That is called Upamsu Japa. And the third one, which is best of Jabas, is Mandal Jabba. The mantra is repeated in the mind only. So these are the practice. We have to start the practice with Vaikhari Jabba, because the pronunciation, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the pronunciation, the correct pronunciation of the mantra is very important. Because that creates the energy correct. The form of energy 
from that japa therefore uh, the beginners should uh, start the japa vaikari in the form of vaikari audible loudly loudly japa any mantra even a short mantra should be loudly recited so then the form of the mantra will come to the mind the tune and form and the meter what we say the meter the lengthening and shortening all those will come to the uh, mind and the uh, letters the syllables of the mantra uh, like om uh, shri shiva or whatever we pronounce there it should come like the shri means it is shri it should not be shri so shri om shri or shiva shiva is not shiva it should be shiva and shivaya the va should be lengthened no, like that like double va va so shivaya so like nama nama when we say na and ma it should come appear to be clear so therefore uh, audible java first loudly uh, reciting then the ubam shuvan only lips movements or murmuring and then the mental japa after that so if we directly go to mental japa there is a chance of wrongly pronouncing the wrongly remembering the mantra you cannot say pronouncing that but wrongly chanting or the, uh, the repeating the mantra this was because mind cannot uh, uh, make sure that how, how letter which letters are there and how it is pronounced only by sound the brain should get that uh, clear understanding of the mantra because mantra after all it is sound only and sound form is changed into energy form that is what is happening there so therefore the chanting and no uh, like the loudly chanting will make the uh, resonance of that sound in the brain and then it is remembered like we remember the music so the, by by sound we remember the music the brain has a special capacity to uh, store the tune of the music so from that we remember the music and the chant this is called japa so japa has a, another derived meaning the japa has two letters ja and pa it says Japa is all protective. How? Because the ja of the word, the japa word ja, it means creation. Because in Sanskrit, for janma, for birth and creation, uh, we can make ja as uh, the one letter for that, indicating the janma. So ja means creation. and pa means protection protection of the beings so japa means the being is protected by this or the protection of the being is called japa so therefore japa is very important is a derived meaning uh, we can uh, get from this uh, word no separating the letters so this way japa is very important for uh, the beginners the sadhagas and then uh, when the japa uh, we call the japa japa so the, after practicing a long time the japa will automatically happen even in the sleep the japa will happen when we sleep uh, like uh, inside the uh, consciousness or inside the uh, subconscious mind uh, reciting of the mantra will be continued it is a interesting uh, thing to experience that is called ajapa japa so the ajapa japa is the last state of japa so the that uh, sadhaga is one with that japa identified with that japa he become the, the his mantra and uh, the mind 
and the body is identified. So it is one with that. So then now the next thing we will discuss tomorrow. Om Purnamatah Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudasyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti